All right, well, good morning, everyone. Um, it is about four o'clock in the morning because I wanted to get up and get these videos going. I told you that I'd be making a ton of diamond press videos today and tomorrow. Uh, of course, HSN Craft Day is tomorrow the 14th, but at the stroke of midnight, they went ahead and posted finally the uh, diamond press items. So the items I do have were sent for my review free of charge from diamond press and all opinions are my own. And any links that will be in the description box for you to click on to get easily over to um, HSN or even my my diamond press if you're looking at you know the mat or anything else that I might have um, will be affiliate links which means I make a small commission if you use those links to make any purchases which I really appreciate it helps keep the channel going and um, at no extra cost to you so I think it's a great program so thank you guys so much for that support um, so I think to this morning right now I'm going to release or do the um, the diamond press gingerbread house stamped and dies because you guys are everybody's like do the gingerbread house do you have the gingerbread house did they send you the gingerbread house do the gingerbread house so yes they did and yes i will and um so yeah at the stroke of midnight uh hsn put up pretty much everything that diamond press is going to have today so um today and tomorrow and then you know um if they don't sell out right because i know i heard from some people that they uh can't make it for before craft day to pick anything up so um hopefully there'll be something there for you but um this stuff is available now and I'll have the links to everything and then, you know, uh, this specifically also, of course, because this is what I'll show right now. And I think I'm going to make a video for both of the gatefold cards together uh, and we'll see how that goes because um, time is running short and I would like to show you guys everything. Um, so let's open this guy up. Again, mine are always usually kind of open a little bit because they are promo or demo items. So um, don't feel like yours is going to show up that same way, but this one's packed pretty well anyway. Um, this looks adorable. Uh, let's see here. So, and also a lot of times, where is that open? Oh, you know what? There's another package inside the package. So this opens here. <laughs> um, we'll see, you know, what size, maybe we can get some little treats in here. Um, we'll see, uh, exactly what it can hold or just to be a little dimensional cutie pie thing that, you know, a little decoration. So, uh, maybe even, um, an ornament, right? If you put a little, uh, string at the top but let's see it looks pretty straightforward i mean the pieces remind me a lot of when i make gingerbread and uh, gingerbread houses um other than they don't have the tabs obviously it just has these pieces you have your front and your back you have your side pieces your panels and then your roof pieces and then this is for the base at the bottom there are little circles and of course a little gingerbread man or um kid however you want to do it with the little tag uh, space or the one that just doesn't have the little loop on the top and then the gumdrops and the uh, candy canes that you can cut out from the stamps which I'll show you in just a minute so the instructions are really well uh, made really nice and really pretty I can see that right now so that's going to be um, easy and you know I, in my mind I pretty much was going to use craft paper and white embossing powder and it's basically what they're kind of showing here so we'll do that um, and then of course you dress it up however you like um, and then use whatever colors you like. I was trying to look for something white for the background, but let me see if I can put on the packaging here. So the stamps, really nice, big, cute stamps. You have two different, um, fronts of the house, I suppose, if that's how you want to do it. So this one has like a more of a door with like a little windows. Um, this one is just a door with a sweet little heart. Um, to even different types of sides for the house. Like this has a little window with the shutters open, which is so cute. And this one has just like your little windows. And then even for the roof, you have two different types of roofs, roofs, <laughs> roofs, I don't know. Um, here this one has like the shingles with the little gumdrops and this one has the gumdrops on the top with the little peppermints or candies, which is super cute. And then of course, like I said, you have different ones that you can cut out separately with your little gingerbread man. So really comprehensive, but I think done in a smart way, you know. Um, and then you have your large cutting folder, your small cutting folder. And that's what we have. So what I'm going to do is let's get started, hit the ground running with some craft paper and some uh, Versa Mark and some white embossing powder. I will be right back. Okay, so I just have some basic craft card stock. I'm going to cut it down a little bit just so we can work with it a little bit easier and get it through the uh, marquee. So I'm kind of eyeballing this a little bit. Um, I'm just using plain white uh, embossing powder. I now have some that's like pearly. I think there's some out there that will poof up more even if you that's what you're looking for. Um, you know, use whatever you like. Um, it, it, you know, as I was looking for my paper and things, I, I found this stuff. 
my craft foam because I have some pieces laying here from whenever I use it in the marquee. And I was like, oh, you can definitely cut this out of foam if you wanted. So, um, you know, make a little puffy house, a little foam house. I think that'd be really cute. Um, as far as the stamping and things, you know, you're on your own on that one. I'm not sure exactly. I guess maybe you can use some black ink or something or a really, really good white pigment ink. I don't know. Um, of one, but uh, you can definitely try that out. I thought that would be kind of cute. But let's get this going. So I was debating if I should cut them out and then stamp them because I'm going to do the embossing. So I'll try one stamp and then cut, and if the embossing gets a little bit wonky, then I will do the rest cut and then stamp. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to go with this traditional so it looks like icing, just the white, but you have your little guys over here that's really, really adorable. But let's get this out. And I want to make sure I have enough. Oh, you know what? Actually, look. Well, yeah, that's fine. I was going to start with the house, but just come around. Yeah, we're good. I just want to make sure I have enough room around that's going to cut nicely. And that. We got our Versa mark. really want to make sure you ink that up really, really well. And if you think you might not, you might want to use a stamp position and then that way you can stamp it again in the same spot if for some reason when you do this and you lift it up that you don't see that it got stamped the way you would like. Not bad, I can see I missed one there. Ugh. You know what, I'm just going to go with it. Maybe I'll put something there to decorate it. Oh yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. Okay. So this is just a la mode white embossing powder. I don't even know if this company exists anymore, but uh, I bought tons of it back in the day, so that's what I have. Okay. And of course you could have used your um, embossing buddy before you stamped to get rid of any static cling you might have had there. I'm gonna take a moment just to kind of get rid of these little extras. And I'll be right back. Okay. The reason I had that little over stamping is because when I had first put the uh, stamp down, it has like a little oil, a little residue on the acrylic stamp from when they were made. So that little oil kind of stuck to my paper. That's kind of what that ghosting was. Let me take our heat tool. I'm just gonna go across the whole thing. Like I say, once you see it react, just move on. Because you can over emboss where it just ends up flat. So I'll emboss this and I'll be back. Okay, so that's done. I'm gonna do uh, one more exactly the same way um, on this side and then we'll cut it out. Okay, so I just finished that up. And just the detail, I was just looking at it. Um, this one obviously did not do what I did with the ghosting over here on this one. It came out perfectly. And look at the little, like a open circle, a little dot, open circle, little dot. I just think it is so cute, the little tiny sprinkles on the gumdrops. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pretty much stamp everything. I think that's what I'll try and do first. So we did that. We need two side pieces and we need um, two of the fronts. And I suppose you only need to stamp one of the fronts because unless you want to decorate your house all around. So, uh, of course, I'm going to go with, oh, you know what? I was going to go with a little kind of sweet uh, one here, but I do want to show you guys the um, candy canes. And this one has like candy cane repeated here. I guess we can still put candy canes even though we have the little cute leaves in the background, right? Let's do it this one. And... Literally, I'm just going to stamp this exact the same way, and um, like I said, I'll need one of these. And if you want to decorate the front and back, then you can do that, of course. Just go this way now. And this one, we do need plenty of room because you are going to have some edges on this. These side pieces that we have to account for. So let me see if this piece of paper is even big enough. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let me grab another piece of paper. And you can see 
on there. I was just wondering because I put it down again. I'm like, hey, am I going to get that ghost thing again <laughs> from the uh, little chemicals that were on there? But I think we're okay. So cute. Just have a little bit here. And we're going to heat. Emboss that. And then all we're going to do is our two... Um, side pieces. Okay, and for the little windows, I guess like, to coordinate with this, I'm going to use this one. Um, you can mix and match, but they kind of go together, right? The one with like the little um, lines in the window, this one with the little round kind of effects. So I'm going to use this one. And I'm just going to stamp this one twice and do two of them. Again, giving them some spacing because we do need to um, trim them out so stamp emboss and I'll do two of these and I'll be right back all right so we have everything uh, other than the little gingerbread man I'm not sure exactly if I want to put use him on white paper or what but we're gonna line this up here and we are going to cut these guys out so just you know line up your dies um, as best you can. If you want to make an aperture like I've shown in the past, just run it through some cardstock, um, like a scrap piece of cardstock, and then you can use that to see through to make sure you're cutting exactly where you want it. But I think that looks pretty good. And um, I'm bringing out the marquee, but I do want to make sure you guys know because people ask this all the time. Uh, thin metal dies are interchangeable with any die cutting machine so I mean if you like this um, kit obviously you can get it even if you don't have a diamond press machine you can use it in whatever Empress, Gemini, Cuddlebug whatever is you big shot you can use them in any of those so I'm gonna cut out all my pieces look how cute and uh, again just line it up I'll show you real quick how to line them up just in case you're curious this one did have me kind of stumped because it's the side piece and it has this little cuteness but um, this is basically your bottom part that's going to clip to the um, very, very base square so you can just put this oops sorry on here like this that's how you would line that up okay so the whole little picture that you made is going to be inside this square and then um, our front and back again I'm just going to cut out one that's just um, plain craft card stock and then the other one's going to be cut out here and if you, you can tell obviously that this is just going to go pop right there okay i'll have all the pieces cut when we come back okay i've cut all my pieces here we just need one of the base pieces and again this is all in your instruction sheet uh that really pretty instruction sheet Super cute. So I was thinking about doing the tape trick with the gumdrops, but then I'm like, well, gumdrops are usually kind of, um, what's the word? They're not, uh, you know, that didn't cover. Well, let me do this again. Um, I'm going to fold this over because that one didn't cut through quite too well, so I'm going to do that again with an extra shim on top, which is basically the paper itself. I just folded it over on itself. Um, Where is my instruction sheet? Let me find that so we can go along with what it says because otherwise I'll just go off on my own. And see, it hadn't cut out too well on this one edge, so all I did was fold it back over on itself and it gave it enough pressure for that. Let me find that okay. sheet. And again, I have embossing powder everywhere. It feels great. <laughs> so this is just to fold along the score lines as shown, of course. Um, pretty much everything. What? Okay, so I do want to uh, point out a couple things on this one because I noticed that on the demo pictures um, if you're on HSN there you'll see them these parts are folded forward so the roof is kind of on here too which makes like a little eave it's really cute and then this goes back okay and same thing for the um, the back piece so fold towards you and then these guys fold back the score marks are really nice and imprinted there, so it's really easy to do. 
And then we have, of course, our base has nothing to do other than have a base. And then it says on the these guys, the side pieces you're going to fold back and fold back. So they both go backwards on themselves. So you have those ready. And then um, I suppose they're going to tell you what to do with these when you get there. But basically you're just going to place these on together. Obviously this is the top part of the roof like this. So we'll get there when we get there. But for now they want you to make the base. Now I would definitely use a wet glue. Okay, please use a wet glue because it's, it lasts longer. I'm going to use um, my tape runner so that it sticks and then I can move on. But you definitely want to use a wet glue. Um, but let me uh, look at this instruction real quickly and we'll put it okay. together. So if I had to look at my instructions more closely, we need two bases that are very small square. So I'm going to get to that in a minute, but let's go ahead and put this together. And so this is interesting because it says to put um, your glues on these undersides, right? On the opposite side. So this would be great. Actually, I probably could use white glue because you're going to trap it and they'll stick pretty quickly. But so those two on the underside, right? And then these two, again, the same thing on the very base, but on this back side. Okay. So I'm going to turn them over just for a second so I can see, you know, so we can do this right. But basically you're going to put this down, one of your squares, and you're going to adhere this to the square. And then this one, and you can go around however you like, I suppose, if you want to do this one next or the next one. But they kind of miter in really nicely. As you can see, it just fits right in. And then this guy. And then this guy, and that's why you need that extra one, because you're thinking, okay, I mean, if you don't mind, it's the bottom, you know, I don't know how many people are going to be staring at the bottom of your little creation here. But they might be. So I'm going to cut one more square, and then we're going to top that on here. Okay, so there's that. And I just grabbed some of the new folder because it was next to me. I don't know. I'm telling you, I put things down, and I'm like, where did I put, you know, whatever it was that I was using. All right, I'm going to use a wet glue on this one just so I can line it up nicely and know that it's going to be right where I want it. And then we're going to put our little top on. Actually, and then we're going to stick the sides together and then do our top. But I might be using a wet glue on this portion. So that's really going to make that really secure, really nice and sturdy on the bottom there for you. I'm just trying to see what it says here. Yeah, and then we're just going to put the little glue on the sides and pop it up. So cute. Basically these side tabs here. So I could use a dry glue. You know, I thought it might be hard for me to hold on to, but I think it'll be okay. So again, for my quickness, I'm going to use... my tape runner, but you use a wet glue so you know it holds on forever. <laughs> so we're just going to bring this up. Stick that down, and as you can see this is wet, so that's why it's still doing that. It'll, it'll stay down just a minute here. This is so adorable. Oh my gosh, as soon as you pop it up you see that little house shape. So cute. Again, I'll keep it like this so that the glue settles in. And... So I'm going to give it a few minutes for that glue to stay where I need it. And I'll be right back. But how cute is that? My goodness. So cute. Okay. So I'm going to put that to the side for now. We're going to bring back our roof pieces. And basically these guys, like I said, you're going to kind of fold these back on themselves like this. And I am going to use my tape. I hope it doesn't open up on me because that would be really... But again, use your wet glue. And um, so this, you can do a few different ways, right? Because uh, I remember whenever I made the Crafter's Companion, like, hand embossed or created uh, birdhouse, I left one side open so you can put stuff in it. So, like, if you want to glue this down, how adorable is that? And then you can open this flap so people can get something, you know, if you put a little treat in there. Right now, I'm just going to make it a completely decorative box. Um, but if you didn't want to, obviously, you wouldn't 
tape that part down. Like I said, you can put a string in the middle before we tape it here so you can put a little loop on there. You can still pop a hole in this afterwards with your crocodile or something and make like a little loop so you can still hang it. Um, and you can just completely shut it if you have a little gift in there and you want the person to <laughs> rip it open, I suppose. But um, for now, I'm just going to use a wet glue and stick it down completely. So these little flaps are just here. They're kind of just decorative. Um, you don't have to do anything with those, I don't think. Let me just make sure on that one. And of course, I have sticky things and I put this on the sticky things. <laughs> that always happens. Uh, yeah, just glue on there. So, I'm just gonna use this here. And then we're gonna do some little decorative elements with some of the other pieces. So as you can see, this is kind of not pushed all the way down. It's kind of at an angle. I don't know if you can, what is the best way to tell that? It's kind of pushing out a little bit. And I always like that because that way when I go to stick this down, um, it's pushing towards the paper. Instead of being completely like laid down, it'd be harder for it to cling to your paper. So I'm just gonna bring this. And as you can see, what I was talking about, the little overhang, that is so cute. I think that's really sweet because usually it's just lined right up at the edge and I think this gives it a little extra, a little extra something. So I'm gonna hold this until it does not move. <laughs> and I'll be back. Okay, and seeing how I wanna decorate this, we're gonna do our little gingerbread man. I am probably gonna use white paper. I don't know how I feel about that, but I'm gonna put that to the side for now. Um, another thing I did wanna do and I totally kind of forgot was to uh, distress with a little bit of brown, maybe around um, the little gingerbread house so it looks like it's baked a little bit. But again, just take whatever, let me see. If this one looks pretty good. Maybe a vintage photo, because it's a little bit lighter brown instead of doing such a deep, deep color. And since I forgot about it, I'm gonna use a smaller um, tool. I'm just gonna use a finger dauber here and take that around and just give it a little, little tan. But normally I would do this before I had put this thing together, okay? So I'm um, just gonna go around and add a little, a little toasty goodness all everywhere, okay? All down here, all around the sides the base and I'll be back. Okay, so it's just a little detail. It's not like, you know, looks cute. Okay, and then um, these little background pieces, I think what I'm gonna do, I'll actually cut out a little um, peppermint for this area, but you know, we have these little leaves and stuff. So I'm just gonna take some alcohol ink markers. This is just an Everblend Arteza marker in glacier green, cactus green. That was a glacier green, cactus green. And um, I can get a little bit closer. I'm just gonna add some color and hopefully this works I haven't used this on craft stock, craft card stock. But yeah, just to add a little something and then we're gonna make our little gingerbread man. And I did wanna do the candy canes, but I don't know that I'm, they're gonna go with this. So again, you would just color in your candy canes, pop them out, color them in. So I'm gonna color in the other side just like that. And anything around the little house that I think needs to be colored in, I'll do that. And then I have this red that's really deep, um, wine red and color in my little heart. So it just gives a little pop of color in the background. Okay, and I'll be back when I'm done okay, with that. Super cute, that little accent just adds a little something there that's really adorable. Uh, you can color even the gumballs, um, gumballs, the gumdrops that way if you wanted. I think that'd be really cute too. Um, and maybe I'll do that at the end, I don't know. Uh, I do want to go ahead and stamp our little characters and a little uh, peppermint here. So again, I'm probably gonna color them in with alcohol ink marker, so I'm gonna use the alcohol proof ink and Let's get our little guy. And I suppose we could do this in brown. I don't know that I have a brown alcohol proof ink, but that would be really cute because it would just blend in. And then I'm gonna take one of our little peppermints and they give you three peppermints and two gumdrops and dyes for three and two. So it's really easy. You kind of pop them out really fast, right? You don't have to spend a lot of time um, cutting them out because you have plenty of uh, dyes to do that with. Hopefully that's good enough. I'm gonna have to stamp it again. We will see. Aw, so sweet, okay. And I put my red marker away for some reason. Let me grab that. Still need that. This is a very deep, deep red, but I guess you can go with more of a cherry red if you wanted. And I'm just coloring it. I'm not trying to do any kind of light areas or shading or anything like that. It's just a quick color in. You can use whatever markers, 
color pencils, obviously, watercolor, whatever you like. I was thinking about watercoloring because that would be really cute for him because um, he would look more kind of a little more um, like baked, but like have more texture, right? But I think I'm going to go with these colors. Let me see. Yeah, we'll see. So I have this kind of yellow ochre color and I'm just going to color him in completely. He doesn't have too much going on, but you can give him little red cheeks and stuff like that and red buttons or however you want to do that. He doesn't really have that much shading going on with him either because just the way he's made, but um, you know, let's take some of this darker brown. This might be too brown, hazelnut brown. And I'm just going to give him a little bit of darker edges because he is a little cookie. And maybe mostly on this side, but So cute and come back in and pull some of that color in so I'm just gonna go around the whole thing again so I hope you guys are doing well I know a lot of you guys uh, probably bought these things at midnight I already read some of the comments from the video I released yesterday um, well I was gonna pause to show you something but I can't I have to keep working on this how cute is that adorable I just put a little spot on his head. When I made this card, um, people went ahead and purchased the um, uh, stamp set. And uh, people were telling me they were just waiting for the other things to come up. And I'll just give them little red buttons. And, you know, you can do a little red, something like that. I put it right on his mouth, but you can put it closer to, like, under his little uh, eyes. However, I don't know. All right. Uh, so let's cut these out. And like I say, it's never one of my videos if I don't drop something. I don't know, I'm not even sure what fell, but there we go. So we're going to cut that out and cut that out and run it through, and I'll be right back. All right. Good thing I took a pause there because my uh, trash man is rolling through. He always comes through around 6. Oh, so cute. I could line that up a little bit better. There you go. Adorable. And again, you know, I'm just going to stick that there with some glue. And I'll probably just put him over on the side somewhere. I don't know. And then again, you could have used the other die that has the little uh, loop on top to cut out your little gingerbread mat if you want to use them as a tag. He's right there. Super cute. So I'll have some pictures for you guys. I hope you like the little project. It came together pretty quickly. You just do your stamping, embossing, or whatever kind of stamping you want to do. And um, I think it's just really cute. So uh, I know you guys like measurements, so let me try to take a measurement of this. I don't know. Um, it's about two and a half inch square at the base. And it is about four inches tall from here to the very tippy top here. And uh, about two and a quarter in this area here and okay let's go with the other dimensions <laughs> how uh, wide is this uh, again about two and a half because basically it's the same as this right so there it is super cute so okay, thank you so much so i will have pictures for you guys there um at the end here uh thanks for watching uh the links will be the in the description box if you guys want to use those um that would be really appreciated and i will see you all at the next one all right, bye now. And the next one actually will be in just a little bit because I'm going to get these videos going. So uh, we'll see you soon. Bye now.